Welcome Aquarius. This is your November 2024 Tarot reading. Um, this is going to be for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising. Some of you are intuitively guided and I want to thank you for paying attention to your intuition as do your spirit guides. Um, and I say that because I read through my spirit guides. Um, I'm an open vessel for the guides of the light um, who I feel like connect to your guides. By the way, that's why sometimes a reading can really fit so many different people. Like I feel like if you you feel it um, intuitively, then you know it's your guides who were making sure you saw the reading. Um, yeah, I mean, um, now some of you may be in love with an Aquarius, whether platonically or romantically. Same thing. Remember, your guides know you're here. You'll probably get messages also. So I just say be open. Just be open. Um, don't try to make a reading fit. You know what I mean? Sometimes a whole reading will be for you. Sometimes it's just mess like here and there messages. Um, and remember, like we are telling your story, but there can be like different avenues to that story. So just just be open. That's all. Um so we're going to use uh, a few different decks for your reading. We are, of course, are going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom. But I am going to use, um, I'm going to do that at the end of the reading. We are going to bring in the romance angels. Um, if love comes up, if love doesn't come up, then I probably won't bring them out. But if it does, which it normally does, we'll go ahead and bring them out. Um, I have brought back the major arcanas for November and I use these for like bullet points. These are all major arcanas. I believe I split the deck up, but it was so many years ago. I can't really remember, um, but I love reading like I feel like I feel like they just give us so much more information in a reading. So we will begin with them. We will clarify with the Gilded Tarot or Go deeper. Um, and deep we go. That's why the readings are long. You know, you got to be okay with that or or not. Completely up to you. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. I feel like when you start to watch a reading that maybe you would consider long, um, it's usually within the last 15 minutes where, boy, I feel like we see some real clarity, some real answers so before you click off, maybe just check out the last 15 minutes. Now, I recommend watching the whole reading, but for those who maybe don't have that type of patience. So we'll use the Gilded Tarot. And for your main spread, I am going to use the Universal Tarot. By the way, I'm also doing opposite signs again. Um, so your opposite sign is Leo. Yeah. Your opposite sign, yes, is Leo. Um, and I haven't done Leo's yet, so I'll do Leo at, right after I do yours. I'm very close to that period. And one of the main reasons why, uh, first of all, I felt intuitively guided to read um, back in September to do opposite signs. And now I get it, like now. I can see where there's a lot of similarities. Some of you may be connected to a Leo. You may have Leo in your chart. That doesn't really matter. This is about, you know, like take me for an example. I'm a Virgo sun. So Pisces is my opposite. And um, could I definitely learn from their emotional house? Yes, I could. And I have. Um, so that's why I say that a lot. I do feel like opposite signs can be very good together also. Um, they just have to understand that they're coming from maybe two different perspectives. And then I feel like they can harmonize, let's just say. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the reading. I'm going to bring the lid down. Not a lot, just a little. And we're going to start with the major arcanas. So, I'll give them a shuffle or two. By the way, everything is always pre-shuffled before you come into the room. But once you're here, I like to give it a shuffle or two.
All right, Aquarius, if you're ready, I'm ready. You know, I'd say November, but I do want you to keep in mind that time is really fluid. It's here on Earth that we keep time. You know, our spirit guides, not so much. Um, but I have to put a date on them so I can put them in a playlist. Do you know what I mean? So whenever the timing is right, divine timing, for you to hear a reading, I feel like it will find its way to you. Or you'll find your way to it. All right. We start with the Hermit. Interesting how I just said I'm a Virgo. That is a card of Virgo. Um, though I'm not really looking at the major arcanas as people. Though you can. You know, I always want you to trust your own intuition. The Hermit could certainly speak to some of you um, potentially going through, you know, some type of dark night of the soul, some type of difficult situation or situations, and you're really seeking wisdom within the Hermit's energy. Um, you know, you're not, like, it can be the energy of even isolation, but I feel like, I feel like it's not a bad thing. Um, sometimes we do need to be like alone to reflect, to go deep. Um, you know, the hermit to me is is a wise old soul, just trying to figure that out. It's a nine, so it can certainly stand for a cycle that maybe now is coming to an end. And I'm saying coming to an end because the hermit's looking like towards the future as a beacon of light. Um, so, to me, that's the illuminator for the hermit. Um, and what I mean by that is I just feel like your, your steps are going to be guided. Um, or at least you'll have the ability, you know, whether you pay attention to the signs is up to you. We have Capricorn, your neighbor. Um, represented by the devil. Which really talks about temptations. But the hermit, who is really a spiritual energy, is illuminating the devil. So it can talk about like certain temptations that just kind of held you back. And now you have clarity over that. Of course, it can just represent um, a Capricorn for some of you. But I do feel that. I feel like the beacon of light of the hermit is illuminating just like anything that's, you know, that may have, like, tempted me, let's just say back. That's the word I feel like using, back. Yeah, that could be a person, situation, substance. All right. Well, hello, son. So, if, let's just say... The devil is talking about lower vibrational energy at all. It's kind of beautiful that the sun then comes out because the sun is your illuminator. Um, you know, what's ever done in the dark will come to the light when the sun is out. So you don't even have to worry about it. It will just be shown. The sun is really that energy of feeling like a kid again. You know, it's playful. Um... It's saying to yourself, you know, this is a brand new day and I can do whatever I want to do with this day. I feel like, you know, the temptations of the past are fading away. And it does feel like you're beginning this new cycle. But in the light, that that's, that's a great omen. And then we have the hangman. So interesting, we have two cards mirroring each other, both seeking wisdom, um, both seeking spiritual wisdom, and both are seeking this wisdom to use on this physical plane on Earth. Uh, the hangman can be a pause in the action, but listen, maybe there needed to be a pause. Let's go ahead and move these off the board. You know, any type of pause that needed to happen, 
again, it's like, it's like I'm not taking a step forward until I feel comfortable in that energy. So I kind of love the hermit opening this energy up because, again, the hermit's emerging from the cave. That tells me that, you know, whatever situation you were going through feels like now it wants to fade away. Will I allow it? Will I allow it to fade away? Um, sometimes, you know, especially when it's related to people, sometimes people don't treat us well, but yet we just keep staying with that same energy. So let's go ahead and bring in the universal Tarot, and it will certainly let us know what each one of them is representing. I'm going to give it one more shuffle. Okay, let's give them a cut. Um, by the way, my brother, Mike, who has crossed over January 24th. Um, okay, well, let's leave them just the way they came. My daughter has an Aquarius moon. I do a lot of personal readings for Aquarius, too. All right, so we're going to take them as they came out. Well, hello. First card is the marriage card. Interesting. We have the Knight of Swords coming right into that energy. Like that's where he's heading, right to that Four of Wands. We have the Seven of Wands. Look at this. The Ten of Cups, the House of Love, the House of Harmony. You know, the Ten of Cups with the sun, and it really is kind of falling under the sun's energy. That's kind of beautiful. What did I do? I took my whole deck off the table. That's weird. Um, I am going to do five across, though. So at this moment, the Ten of Cups is mirroring the marriage card. And, okay, well, we have justice. So it's interesting because I didn't want to get too excited yet about the Four of Wands. And then you have justice that's now mirroring it. Heart of Libra, by the way. Um, but it could certainly talk about, you know, a commitment that um, probably has ended or some of you are thinking about ending you know, it doesn't even have to relate to love, but yet, in a way, hmm. I feel like some of you have been through just a difficult situation as it relates to another person. You know what I mean? Like, someone's just not playing your game. Someone's playing their game. And, um... I feel like that's what the hangman, that's the wisdom the hangman is seeking, whether to cut ties. You know, I feel like in this energy, you really want to trust your spirituality, what you're feeling, like your instinct. All right, well, let's go right below it. Let's keep going. We have the King of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. We have we have both Virgo and Capricorn on the table. Mm. And then we have the Three of Swords. Interesting. So, you know, I knew there was a reason why, you know, the marriage card, like usually when I see that, I get excited because that's about a real commitment. You know, it's about two people who, who are making a commitment to each other. However, now that it's mirrored by justice, I feel like, well, that commitment's over. That commitment is, you know, at least someone is seeking the wisdom over that. Like, should I end that? Should I not? I feel like there was, like, a clue was um, 
you know, this could certainly be someone that you were in love with, but I feel like the communication just went south. I feel like um, with the Seven of Wands here, which is about standing your ground, and right now it's right in the middle of the reading. I feel like if anybody's been aggressive with you, in a way, I feel like that's an answer. But here is the Three of Swords. Three of Swords is about heartache and loss. But here's the thing. Because I'm feeling that, I feel, I feel like you're turning the page. And I feel, by, I feel like by turning that page... There's something new that's going to be introduced to you, for you. And it could be a person or it could just be a different way of looking at life. Um, hmm. I just feel like if you're dealing with anyone who just seems aggressive, like, and when I mean aggressive, what I mean is like, when they make a point, it's it's like my point, you know, it's my way or the highway type of energy. Um, yet it doesn't seem to agree with you. Let's keep going. We have the strength card. So that's good. You know, that tells you you have the ability to really overcome this and really be, come out stronger than when you went in, let's say. You know, the, the strength card's really about taming, like, you know, my light and my shadow. Um, and I feel like the reflection through the strength card what it really turns into is courage, like your courage. Maybe courage to live life according to your terms. Because I do feel like someone else is kind of pushing their way. Almost like my way or the highway. And I feel maybe some of you may be choosing the highway. By the way, that is your opposite right there, Leo. Um, I also love the strength cards coming next to that Three of Swords. So I feel like that Three of Swords is not affecting you like, let's just say, it once had. I feel like you're overcoming that. We have the Page of Swords coming under the Ten of Cups. I just want to see what he's looking at. Look at this. You're looking at soulmates. Soulmates. Interesting. So you have some difficult cards, but you have some beautiful cards at the same time. And with the Hermit opening up the whole reading, I feel like um, some of you, you know, and I call it the Dark Knight of the Soul, just because, you know, it's something that I've gone through that was very difficult. But really, I feel like in the Hermit's energy, like uh, what I'm doing is I'm seeking the light. I'm seeking light to my answers. Um, I'm seeking wisdom. I'm seeking help, right? But in the Hermit's energy, I feel like what the Hermit realizes as I go through this experience is that I am the light. I am my own savior. You know, and that may be where justice comes in. I feel like some of you have been on, like, on the hook of whether to cut ties with someone. You know, it's it's kind of like maybe someone promised you, you know, a lifelong commitment. But for whatever reason, life got in the way. They got in the way. They got in their own way. And I feel like, you know, who did it hurt? It hurt you. Yet, at the same time, 
I don't feel like you're the same person you used to be. I feel like you're so much stronger. And, you know, it's interesting because we do have the King of Pentacles under the Four of Wands. And it could certainly represent that's who I'm cutting ties with. He is looking back. Um, and this Page of Swords, which can talk about what's in the atmosphere. You know, like some type of communication may be trying to come in. I'm saying trying to come in. I feel like it will come in. And I feel like that has to do with the Knight of Swords also. Some of you, I feel like you may have been, you, you may still be in a relationship, but that relationship's just not working. And you may hear from someone like out of the blue. And it may just change your whole way of thinking. You know what I mean? Like where I was sad and feeling like everything was working against me. All of a sudden, this presents itself. And hello, it is a soulmate. And I feel like whoever you're cut, cutting ties with, they don't feel like a soulmate. They feel more like someone who, again, is like my way or the highway. But I feel like you can only take that for so long. And I feel like you're choosing the highway. And the highway to me just signifies that I'm opening up this next chapter. I'm closing the door to what was and who was. Do you know what I mean? Like if someone... I don't know. I also feel like there could be someone that you were connected to that they themselves have like their own issues that they need to work out. And it does feel like it's them who has to work it out. But I feel like the people around them um, have to unfortunately go through these experiences with them. Well, or at least they think that. So I feel like this page of swords is the potential of communication that's coming in. It's representing a soulmate energy. Even more of a reason to cut ties to what's not working. You know, I feel like we have a right to stop every once in a while, look at our life, examine where we're at, who we're with. Are we happy? This is the way I saw my life. Are there things I can do to change this unhappiness? And the answer is yes. You know, you, you do need to cut ties again to just, enter, let's just say that you're looking for like a high vibrational love. Remember that you must be what it is that you want. And if nothing else, I feel like, You've probably been learning um, what you don't want. Again, someone could have promised you the world. But I don't feel like they delivered. Maybe for a little bit. I feel like this Ten of Cups is outside of this Four of Wands. Like I feel like this is one relationship. And I feel like the Ten of Cups is another relationship. But this relationship is connected to the soulmates. Where this one is connected to heartache and a lot of ego type energy and even aggressive type energy. I mean, see what's on the bottom of the deck. Hello, temperance. So temperance, first of all, a card is Sagittarius. But the meaning of temperance is first patience, right? But it's patience for divine timing. You know, when temper shows up in a reading, I feel like I can take a breath. Because temperance is, you know, and what is, what does, what do I feel anyway at this table? That one of temperance's main jobs is like, she's got a lot. But I feel like it's about the soulmates. It's making sure that the soulmates come together you know, in divine timing, that both cups are equally filled. And that can be what patience has been about. But this is about now moving into divine, into divine timing. Look at that, the four swords right underneath that. 
It's almost like your spirit guide just saying, we wanted to give you this time to heal. This, this broken heart, heartache or loss, to even understand, you know, because I feel like I have to at least look at this energy and understand the chances are I was connected to someone who was probably more than comfortable living in, you know, I'm just going to say lower vibrational energy. Um, and I feel a lot of people are like that, you know, hey, I like it. I like it down here. But it doesn't mean that's what you want. Because I feel like what you want here is not just real love, but love that lasts. So I wouldn't be surprised, even if you haven't like cut eyes yet with someone, because the hangman is like, I'm seeking that wisdom. But the sun's going to illuminate the answer for you. So then maybe you're using the sword of justice again to cut those ties. And what does that do? It opens up. It's like, okay, that means a new door must open. Well, that new door, I mean, just look at this block. I cut these ties. Still the Ten of Cups here. And I know that it's talking about like a prior relationship or even a current relationship. Um, where there does feel like there was a commitment made. But for some reason, I just feel like someone didn't follow through. Or someone proclaimed they were this way and then turned out where, like, everything had to be their way. And maybe I did play that game for a little while, but I feel like, I feel like no longer, even if I haven't left that energy yet, I don't feel like their energy is affecting you. Um... I shouldn't say it's not affecting you because, of course, it's affecting you. But I feel like you are at this stage where you're just saying no more to energy and people that are just holding back, like, the way that you want to live your life. So temperance, divine timing. Well, I love seeing temperance and the soulmates in the same reading because, again, I feel like that's one of her major jobs is making sure that both the soulmates um that their cups are equally filled okay let's bring in the guilty tarot so chances are i mean with i'm not saying chances are we are going to bring in the romance angels but first let's go ahead and um, use the guilty tarot and let's get some more details here um people on the board we have virgo we have capricorn we have leo we have libra we have um leo again we have Sag excuse me sagittarius now I'll kind of forget about that All right. Let's start at the beginning. Let's read it as a whole. We have the world. The next chapter. So something is ending. But it's so something new can begin. You know, to me, the world chapter is a very spiritual time in your life. To me, it, make, it, it makes me feel like you yourself have evolved quite a bit on a spiritual level, but on, on this physical plane. Um, you know, the hermit being a nine, which I feel like nines are always about reflection, but final reflection. Like, I don't want to get too lost in, like, the hangman, right? Seeking wisdom. Should I cut ties? Should I not? I don't know. What do I do? But the hermit is like, you will find those spiritual answers. And the sun just helps illuminate them for you. 
I do feel like this is meant to be a much lighter period for you, like a much more playful, maybe even romantic period in your life. So I like seeing the world right here, right now. You cut those ties and boom, the next chapter begins. You know, think of your own perspective also though, because I feel like the more, let's just say the more you can believe in divine timing, um, or the more you can just let go and trust in divine timing, I'm more, I feel like the more things you have to be surprised about, but I feel it on a very good level. We have the Queen of Swords. Could be you. Um, so Aquarius, Libra. We do have Libra on the board. Or um, why am I forgetting Gemini? Could be you telling someone you had enough. You're done. Because under the Queen is the Three of Swords. And she's coming over the Knight of Swords way. I feel like I'm I'm like telling someone that we're done. We have the Ten of Wands over the Seven of Wands. Interesting because the Ten of Wands really I feel like it just becomes too much. I often feel in the Ten of Wands someone is subconsciously Wishing for a tower. It's almost like make me make these changes. Universe, make me make them. What am I holding? Ten of Wands. Over the Seven of Wands. Wow. Also touching the Devil's Energy. But also the Strength cards underneath it. So I feel like this is you overcoming this. Man, I feel like you've been dealing with someone pretty aggressive. No more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Hello, sun. Right over the Ten of Cups. With the sun right above it. That makes sense. Because we do have soulmate energy. And again, soulmates, I feel like we know each other. We know each other's souls. Whether we met in this lifetime yet or not, we'll still recognize each other's souls. This may talk about two people like who are, what's the word I want to use, elevating to the same vibration. Um... And I feel like the sun really helps give you clarity if, you know, on your path, like, is this the right direction I should go? Like, maybe it's like, my God, I just got out of a relationship and here comes someone new. Should I do that? Should I move into that energy? Well, the sun, again, it's, it's here to help illuminate your answers for you, but it's also to help you you know, open up these new doors, um, move back into playful energy. I feel like someone's had you like just aggravated and hurt and ugh, just feels like too much, too much. And I feel like you are speaking, maybe not those exact words, but I feel like, I feel like you're breaking up with someone. It's interesting how Leo is your opposite, and you now have three Leo cards, two suns. So, synchronicities there. We have, look at this, the Four of Cups. That makes perfect sense. Four of Cups can talk about discontentment and boredom in one's life. Now, it is mirroring that Four of Wands, which is really meant to be a beautiful energy, 
but not everybody who we connect with who makes a commitment to us can keep that commitment. I mean, it's just the way life is, right? And here you are, I feel like, taking the brunt of it. So in the Four of Cups, again, it is about, you know, some type of discontentment or boredom within your life. You are looking for a change in this energy. You know, you don't have to. Um, but I also want you to recognize how this cup is coming in. And this is a new cup. And the Four of Cups is really about learning to use your spiritual discernment. Some of you, I can't help feel that someone's reaching out before you even end the previous relationship. And I'm not, I'm not saying that as a bad thing because I feel um, like I, I just get this feeling like you gave it everything you had and it just wasn't enough. Not that you weren't enough. I just feel like there's an issue with them. You know, like, you know, maybe they're tempted to certain type of like lower vibrational energy. That could be like drinking or sub, you know, using drugs or, you know, sex or any anything that, well, would go against this commitment. And by the way, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, because the hangman tells me that you this is something you've been thinking about anyway. The world is, especially with temperance right here, that talks about divine timing. Here comes this cup, right? Use your spiritual discernment, but what's right below it? The soulmates. Temperance saying, trust in divine timing. You do your part, I'll do my part. And maybe your part is just like using the sword of justice to, again, cut any ties that need to be cut. Hmm. Here comes this cup. And again, it's interesting the way he's looking up like at the hangman's energy. So I feel like I got two different situations going on here. Some of you have probably already used that sword and already cut those ties. And some of you have not yet. Um, but I feel like if I'm talking to you, it's something you've been thinking about probably for a long time. Um, especially with the Ten of Wands here. And I do get this feeling like that. I probably tried everything I could try. But someone, I don't know, someone's got a big ego, I feel. Someone's got a big ego, and I don't feel like you can handle that. Not that you can't handle it. I don't feel like you want to handle it anymore. So here comes this new cup. We have the full, a new beginning. A leap of faith. Coming over the King of Pentacles. You know, maybe this King is not someone who's leaving. Maybe this is someone who's entering. It's interesting because the Fool being under the world and the world being the next chapter but divine timing also being here gives me the ability to rest and enjoy and just allow to flow. I feel like it's giving yourself a new beginning, first and foremost. You know, knowing what is no longer serving you, who's no longer serving you, who's holding you back, holding you down, who's trying to make you live life according to their terms and not your terms. And, you know, you're, you're a freedom-loving sign. So it's very hard for you to have someone, like, dictate to you the way things should be. And I feel like some of you have been dealing with that. And, again, that brings me back to the hangman. 
So the fool saying, first of all, we need to go back to the four cups where there is a cup coming in. And it is asking you to use your spiritual discernment, but you do have divine here um, who, is, who is working in your life. So, and you trust that. The fool wants you to take a leap of faith. And listen, sometimes I feel like the fool is saying, just take a step in. You know, it's not about like, where will this ultimately go? Will it promise me, you know, right from the beginning that this is going to be my forever person? That's kind of hard, though. You're soulmates. But at the same time, I feel like, and, you know, as I say that, I'm, I'm also thinking both of you are carrying the energy of the sun. So both of you are like ready for this new beginning. Um, probably with different people, different situations. Yet I feel like you both find yourself, you know, in the same type of energy. Where both are probably saying enough is enough to someone. Enough is enough is enough. We have the emperor. Could be the father of your children. Could have been a literal marriage. Um, this is a card of Aries. And I have to tell you, normally Aries or the emperor is someone that I definitely can look up to. But he is coming over the three of swords. And, you know, the emperor is very methodical. And it's very seldom that I'll say anything negative about the emperor. But I can definitely feel this, this energy being overbearing. Yeah, I definitely feel that. You know, some of you, again, it could be like the father of your children. It could be the mother of your children. Um, but I can't say that I feel I'm with the emperor right now. We have Capricorn, the devil again, over the strength card. Interesting because there's a devil right there, right? Right in between the two of them is that ten of wands. And this is energy you're overcoming. Hmm. It's almost turning the emperor into like a trick, a trickster. You know, where normally I can trust the emperor. I can look up to the emperor. I'm not feeling that. I'm feeling the opposite. I'm feeling this is someone who um, is very restrictive in the way that things around them need to be, the way people need to be. You know, I feel like I feel like if this person was at work, yeah, other people might be like, okay, yeah, we'll follow your way, but. At home, it's different. I just don't feel like loving feelings. And I'm not saying this person didn't love you and you didn't love them, but I don't feel you're in that energy any longer. Um, for some of you, this could have been someone that you had a repeat pattern with and you kept trying, but lo and behold, nothing changes. You know, maybe the, there's promises in the beginning, but very quickly, I feel like it'd be very quickly, you would return right back to the same energy again. All right. I didn't even know we had cards down here. Hello, Ten of Cups again. So the Ten of Cups under the Ten of Cups with the sun mirroring the sun. Wow. Hello, Wheel. Destiny. 
right over the soulmates. And then, hello, Ten of Pentacles. So, wow. This is the house of abundance. Now, if it's relating to love, to me, the Ten of Pentacles stands for loyalty. I don't know why. I just feel that. I kind of love that the wheel is in between the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles with, with it coming right over the soulmates. And again, in that Four of Cups, this cup is being offered to you. It's coming in. Some of you are making that decision. Do I accept this cup? It must feel good. Or if it hasn't come in yet, it, I feel like it's coming in very soon. You know, and I also feel for some of you, it's like, because that cup is coming in, it's giving you the courage that you needed to, like, end a relationship. All right, well, let's go right below. But boy, do I like this corner right here. How did I know the lovers was going to come out? I just knew it. I knew it was going to come out. So this is the card of Gemini. Um, the meaning of a card is a head over heart decision. However, I'm sure many of you seen me point this out a million times. The feminine is feeling the energy of the masculine, but the masculine's not in person yet. So they're not like in physical, let's say, contact yet. But yet I could still feel this energy. Now it's coming under the full that's coming under the world. So this is not old energy. This is new energy. And then we have the Queen of Cups. Our loving queen. The queen who loves to be in love. She doesn't have to be in love. And by the way, I feel like you're all people on the board. That's just how I read. Um, unless we feel it otherwise, I don't feel you're the emperor. Um, I do feel like that is someone else who's being pretty aggressive. I know you're one of the soulmates. And this page of swords, I feel like, again, it matches what the, the lover's image is saying. Like, here's the masculine, just not in physical form yet. I mean, he's here, he's alive, he's on this earth. Just haven't connected physically yet. But I feel like you are going to connect. It's almost like someone's going to reach out to you while you're going through this difficulty. But it's going to change the way you think. It's like, sometimes it's like the worst day of my life. And then, boom, my phone rings. And I know this because it's happened to me. And then your phone rings. And it's like, you know, which tells me maybe you already know this person. Because I feel like you're going from the Queen of Swords, which is your natural energy. And then I feel like you're moving into the Queen of Cups. And what I'm proud about is I feel like I'm not allowing someone either of my current or past, but it would be recent past, who again had aggressive type energy, my way or the highway, so to speak. Um, and I feel like I've given them chance after chance after chance, but it just keeps turning into the same, same old, same old. So what do I need to do? I need to change me. I need to say enough is enough. And I don't know. Someone may reach out, like I said, and um, make some type of communication with you. 
and that could just change the whole way you're thinking. It's like you're excited about life again. And that may give you the, the guts to then cut ties to the one that's not, not giving you love. That's causing problems in your life. Because you are changing from the Queen of Swords to the Queen of Cups. And to me, that means that you're keeping your heart open. You know, I feel like there's probably a lesson you learned here. And that is not to close your heart due to some people who, you know, just don't know how to love. I mean, if someone is the type of energy where it's my way or the highway, I mean, that's good to a point. But when it comes to love, it's got to be a two-way street. And this feels like it was a one-way. And I'm not saying the whole relationship was like that. But probably pretty quick. Okay. Whoa. Okay. I don't even know where to start. So, let's start right here. Look at this. The strength card over the strength card. Strength card's looking right back at the queen. Page of wands under the page of swords. Hmm. Some of you, you could certainly know this person. You know, it's interesting because the Page of Wands, I often call my foal. And we have the foal. And I call the Page of Wands my foal because I mean that in a good way. Because I feel like this is someone who does take chances in life. And knows that not all of them are going to work out. Boy, do I feel like two people are going through similar situations. There's that page of swords again. Now you're completely connected. And then the Hierophant. Card of Taurus. But listen, it's a five. And it asks for change. But it asks you to look at your life and ask yourself, you know, are you living life with the standards that you believe in? You know, the, the Hierophant to me is of the light. But it wants you to question your own beliefs. You know, am I living life according to my beliefs or someone else's? And then we have the Queen of Wands. My um, action-oriented queen. This is someone who moves according to her desires, her passions. She doesn't let fear get in the way. Doesn't mean she doesn't have any fear, but she doesn't let fear rule the day. And then the high priestess, your intuition. Interesting energy here. Some of you, I feel like you're reconnecting with someone from back in the day. Maybe even like your hometown type energy. Or, you know, somewhere where you spent time, where you have good memories about. Some of you may be actually making a move, moving back to your hometown. And there may be someone coming to greet you, so to speak. Again, I feel like both these people have gone through very similar experiences. Both of them, I feel like, had to use the sword of justice. Both of them were probably in a committed relationship. I'm saying both. You're one of them. Um, different situations probably as it relates to the relationship. But I feel like both have probably given someone more than one chance. And now has come to the realization enough is enough. Remember the sun is here to illuminate everything. Your steps. Your guidance. 
Don't forget, divine timing is here. The wheel, your destiny. And your destiny has a soulmate on it. And the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. Now, I feel like I have to go back to this King of Pentacles and say, okay, this probably isn't someone who's leaving. This is probably someone who's coming in. So, when I say the King of Pentacles, yes, it can be a Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. I mean, we have we have them all on the board now. But here's what I really feel. Because I, I kind of want to teach you to read without really reading signs and think more about their energy. So the King of Pentacles is interesting because he's facing the past, almost like I am from the past. And he's mirroring the soulmates. And he's got the fool over him and the lovers. And over here, you have the wheel, the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. So to me, the King of Pentacles is someone in the upright, normally, is someone who's very loyal. Someone who's dependable. Someone who's grounded. You know, I want to say flexible, but not all Earth's are earth signs are completely flexible but i feel like once once they learn certain lessons then they're much more open you know i don't like to keep doing readings to talk about someone from our past coming back but listen it'd be impossible for me not to consider that especially since that is the life that i'm living you know what I mean? And everything seems to be pointing in that direction. Hierophant simply wants you to ask yourself, am I living life according to my terms, my morals, my standards, my faith? Or have I, have I let it wavered for another, you know, in the hopes that someone would change? Be who they promised to be. But here's the thing. I don't feel like they will ever be who they promised to be. To anyone. You know, I've been getting this a lot in readings where I just feel like certain people are just comfortable living life that way. You know what I mean? If that means that, oh, well, you're going to break up with me, then, oh, well, you're going to break up with me. But, you know, they just don't understand what they're losing. But that, you know, who cares? Like, I feel like at this point, who cares? Because I feel like you've done it all. You've given them every opportunity. Um, and, you know, they could be very charming because something kept bringing you back to them. But I do feel like you're, like, it's over. I feel like it's over. And I feel like this new cup coming in from the Four of Cups is your soulmate and i love that the high priestess is here because i feel like intuitively you'll feel that again soulmates have this special recognition of each other because they know each other i've known you before we came into this lifetime and i'll know you after and then these two pages, I mean, side by side. Okay, I'm going to pick up these three just to make some room. Because I do think now is the time to bring out the Romance Angels. Let's go ahead and give them a shuffle. You know, I'm not even worried about that Three of Swords because I feel like if you're someone who's been carrying some heartache around, I feel like Tempers is saying, but we have like this new chapter that wants to open up. And I promise you, there's not heartache in it. There's love in it. There's higher vibrational energy in it. There's abundance in it. There's, there's laughter and joy. I'm not going to say it's going to be issue free, but because we sit on each other's wheel, 
I feel like there's nothing that we can't get through together. All right, let's give him a cut. And I feel like we have to come over here first because the soulmates come out, came out first. Keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from may differ from your usual type and expectations. Maybe you never even thought of this person as an actual soulmate. Um, I can tell you this, they do feel completely different than this person. And maybe you have spent, you know, I mean, I've done that, you know, for a good part of my life. I kept getting tempted to the wrong people um, until I had to just look at myself. You know what I mean? Um, and then you, and you know, and then you change and then so does your life. So this could be someone that you didn't even expect to be a soulmate, but lo and behold, lo and behold, past life relationship. Well, that makes sense as soulmates because you probably have lived past lives together. You'll probably live future lives together. You have known each other before. I feel like I literally just said those words. You have known each other before, but not just in this lifetime. You know, I feel like when soul, a soulmate comes in that I am going, or at least I have the potential to spend the rest of my life with them. It does come after some difficult lessons. Why? Because the more that I learn, the more I evolve. You know, the one thing I know that you've learned is what you do not want any longer. Like, I know I don't want someone who's aggressive. I don't want someone who's unbendable, right? My way or the highway, that's not the life I want to live. I want us to live this together. Hello, true love. This is a romance of a lifetime. And then passion. Well, anytime I see the lovers, though it again can stand for a head over heart decision, I think of the chemistry. Look at her. She feels this energy before it even arises. And it feels like she's feeling passion. Passion. Allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Wow. What a difference a day makes. What a difference using the sword of justice makes in one's life. Number one, it gives the world permission to open up. You know, the fool means you are becoming free. But so is someone else. The synchronicities are off the chart. Because they're coming together. And what I mean by that is you have the sun connected. You have the strength card connected. You have, what else? There's more under here. I feel like there's more. Um, and I feel like both of you had to overcome or get through, let's say, an end of a relationship that, again, even that probably wasn't easy. But it's like temperance is like, but hang on to your hat, baby. Hang on to your hat. These changes that just seem so difficult right now, boy, I mean, they are changing your life, but they're changing your life for the better. 
you know, the wheel just signifies that, that, you know, especially with temperance here, that this was probably the time that you were meant to connect. So even if I know who this person is, and again, it feels like because it's a page, it would have been back in the day, could have been like back in my hometown. But I feel like this is also representing like some type of communication coming in, whether it be through the phone or, you know, on your social media. Some of you, you could have maybe already cut ties. I've been picking this up a lot for November. It's like, people cutting ties and then changing their status from, you know, in a relationship to single and someone else picking up on that, like, oh, she's single now. He's single now. I'm just going to reach out. Doesn't even mean I reach out. Like they reach out and they say, oh, baby, I've been waiting. No, maybe it's just, it's a simple hello. You know, breaking the ice. Okay. Let's go to the opposite end now. And let's look at the world, which is the next chapter, full, asking you to take this leap of faith. And then the lovers. Some of you could certainly also be in a twin flame relationship. Whoa. Oh, that really went flying. Finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life, your love life right now. Well, okay, that makes sense. So for some of you, the cutting of these ties could mean, you know, that I'm losing a home or losing half the finances, that type of thing. But listen, I feel like you'll recoup them. And some of you, it could be exactly why you've stayed longer than you, I don't know, feel comfortable staying. I don't want you to forget that you do have the Ten of Pentacles over here. So I feel like whatever I may lose, let's say, let's say this is a marriage and I am cutting ties and let's say our, our finances are together. Well, okay. So I might be losing 50% of my income, but this is definitely showing you not only recouping, but recouping in a way that almost feels unbelievable. So sometimes I got to be willing to take a loss. And I'm not trying to tuck you into it. Um, but I but I do feel like that. You know, it makes me think of some of the relationships I've been in where I've always been the one to leave. And I I would leave everything behind. I would just take like, like I remember back in the day, I'd take my CDs, my music. I always had to have my music, my photo albums, you know, the clothing for me and the kids. And I didn't care about the rest. Because it just wasn't worth fighting over. Now, I don't know that I ever really had anything good enough to fight over you know, back then, but I'm still that way. Even moving in with Sam, I only brought two suitcases with me. And I'm only saying this because I do feel like you will recoup and, you know, not just recoup, but you're going to be better than. Okay. Whoa. Flirt. Extend your lighthearted energy to others. Heart to heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. Now, again, we're looking at the world. So, this is the next chapter. So, finances, career feels like yes, there is a little bit of a hit. 
Um, but again, I want to remind you, I 100% feel like you will recoup. Like the things that you worry that you're losing, I feel like the day will come you won't even think about them. I did feel that this was going to come in through some type of communication. So heart to heart conversations. I like that a lot. Um, you know, and I don't like to keep telling my story, but really when Sam and I reconnected for five years, it was a long distance relationship and it was the phone. You know what I mean? But we really got to know each other again. Um, and it, it was romantic. You know, it was, it was worth it. This could be the one. This could be the one. You've already met the romantic partner you seek. Brings us right back over here. And then forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. I feel like what this is saying is once this energy, listen, some of you, you've already cut these ties. But you may still, you know, you may still be a little bit discontent. Some of you, you have yet to cut the ties, but, and, and I'm not trying to talk you into it. This is something you'd already be thinking about. And again, I get why, because I feel like this person is so overbearing. And I feel like the energy that wants to come in now, right? Divine timing, the soulmates. It's on your will, you know, and I do believe that, well, this says true love, right? I feel like true love sometimes doesn't reach us until after, especially for soulmates, because each soulmate had their own lessons to learn on this physical plane. And then as they go through these lessons and they learn them and their vibration because, you know, I feel like the more I learn and let go and forgive, the higher my vibration is. So I feel like both of you going through that. And I also feel like, you know, it's hard to say that I'm going to pick up the phone or even if you're still with this person, say I forgive you. It's about forgiving within your heart so that you're not pulling old energy into really what feels like a brand new day. Quite a beautiful day. You know, the beginning of the new. The beginning of the new. Hmm. I feel like I feel like I, I got the answers. So I don't want to push this too far because I feel like the answers have presented themselves. Um, but I do want to say, I feel like there's going to be real synchronicities between you and another. And again, this is your soulmate. This is a soulmate. You have more than one soulmate, but this is a true romantic soulmate. Matter of fact, it's saying you have known each other before. You had past lives together before. It's saying it's your true love. It's coming with the wheel, your destiny, but not just your destiny because it's over the soulmate's. Two people's destiny. It may start again as conversation, but I feel like very quickly it would go romantic. You know, again, someone may just be like, hi, how are you? Just thinking about or just, you know, saw that you changed your status. Want to make sure you're OK. I know we haven't spoken in a long time. Like the, the possibilities are endless. But I, I'm feeling it's going to happen some way like that. You know, if you're discontent and bored in your own life, know that you can make these changes. You know, even if you have no one in mind, because I don't feel like this is something I'm seeking. I feel like it's finding me, but it's meant to find me. That's the thing. It's meant to find me, and I'm meant to find it, and I'm saying it, them. So we're finding each other, but we're finding each other in divine timing. Even more reason 
to use that sword of justice, right? Because listen, when I use the sword of justice, what does that do for me? It balances me. And justice has a job. And, and justice's job is to make you whole again. But you have to use that sword. You know, I'm never going to try to talk you into something that you're 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 not interested in. Like, just you may say, "There's no way, Sandy." Then that's fine. You know what I mean? Um, but for some of you, this is just showing you, like, when you're going through sometimes what feels like the most difficult times in your life, just keep an eye to the sky because temperance is going to reach you. Your spirit guides are going to reach you one way or another, and they're going to help bring this together. But you do have to do your part. You know, I feel like when we learn, especially with the world here, that means that my spirituality is alive because the world to me is walking hand in hand with my spirituality so i've learned a lot i'm much wiser than i used to be i'm now understanding what it is i don't want and maybe that's as far as i go i know what i don't want okay that's a good thing to know. I also feel in the world's energy that it, it to me, normally speaks about something that will be for the rest of your life. So if we just see what's mirroring it is all this love down here, right? I mean, this is of the highest. First of all, it already sits on your wheel. But not only is it the Ten of Cups, love, harmony, laughter. And with the two suns right above it, that makes sense, right? It's that playful side coming out, flirting, heart-to-heart -heart conversations. It may simply start with a hello, but very quickly, I, I you know, I, I feel like it's going to evolve very quickly. It doesn't mean that we come together right away. Because again, it's like the masculine is not quite there yet, but she's feeling the energy. So maybe it is talking about a long distance. I'm saying long distance. It doesn't have to be like different states. Um, could You could live in the same town. But maybe, you know, it's we just communicate for a little while over the phone or through text, that type of thing, or both. But I feel like ultimately... If you're just going with the flow, then I feel like the two of you will just naturally flow together. You know, don't look at your past experiences like, woe is me. Look at them as in how you have grown from them. The person you are today, you wouldn't be this person without these experiences. And I feel like our souls learn more from the difficult things. And really, why? Because we see how strong we can be, how we can overcome. And that's what two people are doing. They're overcoming the past. They're overcoming separately their own relationships and closing the door to that. And the rest just feels like it's just going to flow. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. Did I look at these? Well, okay, I don't even know when these came out, but romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. I don't even know when they came out. And then very soon, clearly decide what you want so that comes to you now. So that comes to you now. I feel like you do know what you don't want. And by knowing what you don't want, it kind of helps you understand what it is you do want. A lot of romance after the fact. Like, I feel giddy. I feel like a kid again after 
the heaviness of what was, but I've overcome that. I've, I've claimed my life back again. I'm believing in my spirituality. I'm believing in my spiritual team, and I'm going to follow the signs and just watch where it leads you. Holy cow. Just watch where it leads you. And you are not being the only one guided here. That's the thing. You're being guided together. Okay, let's bring Mother Mary over this. I swear to God, I did not try to make this a love reading. And, you know, it's life and love. Some of you, you know, you could take this whole situation and say that it could be work-related. But I feel like with the soulmates connected to the wheel, connected to the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles, um, and two sons here, uh, true love, past life love. I mean, you know, how do we not say it's also a love reading? All right, Mother Mary. Oh, all right. Present moment. Okay, that's good news because temperance is about divine timing, but our first lesson is about patience. But now we move into the energy of present moment. This is kind of like judgment, your spiritual team. And we do have very soon clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Present moment. I am fully present in the here and now. And then look at this. Sun, sun, everywhere, sun. I watch for, notice, and trust the signs that heaven continuously sends. I watch for, I notice the signs that heaven continuously sends. And where do your signs come at? In the present moment. How fitting that they came out together, because that's exactly where your signs are in the present moment. They're not in the past. They're not in the future. This means that you're going to be guided. This means the signs are going to be clear. No wonder you got the sun twice. And again, I feel like it's for two different people, but each, I feel like, are going to be guided. And I feel like the signs are going to be so clear. And for some of you, this is your sign. My friend, this is your sign. So, this is one of those readings where, honestly, I cannot wait to read your comments. Um, because I do feel like you're moving from a, a difficult time in your life to a time that just feels, it feels like night and day. Like, I've been in the night, and now you're moving to the day. And I love that the sun is here twice because, again, anything done in the dark will come to the light. It's almost saying I don't have to worry. This is not that type of energy. This is not that type of person. You are not that type of person. And your vibrations are matching more and more and more. Each as you go through your own situations, come to your own realizations, use that sort of justice I feel like that's when divine timing just comes into play. The signs. I'm telling you, they'll be everywhere. All right. I'm going to let that be, guys. Um, I love you. I thank you. My prayer for you is if this is something you're, you know, by the way, I was just going to say if this is something you're looking for, that it finds you. I don't even have to say that. Because for some of you, I don't feel like you're looking. I feel like it's just going to happen. So I want to adjust my prayer and just say that let this wheel, let your destiny and what and the blessings that sit upon that wheel, let them find you and you find them. I love you guys. I thank you. I will see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.